Hello and welcome to Grocer Pod. My name is Sean Kasednar. I'm joined in the studio by Executive Director of Design and Construction, Joel Riggs. We're going to be talking about how AWG can help retailers find sources of public funding. Before I get to Joel, I want to remind you to please subscribe to Grocer Pod. Subscribing means new episodes will be downloaded for you each week. You can find Grocer Pod on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, or any other platform you use to listen to podcasts. Joel, thanks for joining me today. Sean, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Why don't you start out by telling everyone what the Executive Director of Design and Construction does? First and foremost, the focus is, is remodels of grocery stores. Uh, Store Engineering, Design Source Group, DSG are names that people may have heard of or or worked with in the past. Some have, some haven't. But the focal point for us as a group is to help our retailers grow, whether that's through a remodel of their grocery store, building a new grocery store in a new market, helping locate uh, opportunities for new uh, remodels or or trends that, that might be going on. Maybe it's adding sushi to your your lineup or remodeling a deli. Some go as far as building brand new stores, which is also something that we can help with. Well, you know, that could be a whole day's worth of conversation just in and of itself. But today uh, you came in wanting to talk about how how you can help retailers find public funding, which I didn't even know was something that you did. So I think that's a that's a great place for us to start. Uh, why don't you describe what that process looks like? Yeah, Sean, essentially what we, we've been doing for the last several years is working with retailers to, to focus on public incentives. And, and what that really comes down to is partnering with a local community to help build a grocery store, usually in markets that are either underserved or, or have rapid expansion. They, they work in both ways. And public incentives can be done through a lot of different means. Uh, most often, people hear the term TIF or tax increment financing. There, there's other means and methods out there that allow for retailers to take advantage. But a lot of retailers don't even know what to ask, who to ask, or how to ask. And I think that's where we come in. It, it, it's AWG has been involved in, in tens of millions of dollars of public incentives. And these aren't grants. The, these are different than, than grants. Some people have heard of of a REAP grant through the USDA, which allows you to buy uh, up to $500,000 in equipment uh, through federal funds. And and those are obviously opportunities we can help with as well. But what we're talking about today is is really working with the community to develop a plan for how to pay for either a remodel on a major grocery store remodel or a ground up. There are all kinds of rules that go into play when you're looking at public funding. But through a conversation with me and one of my, some of my team, we can at least guide the retailers as to what to look for, questions to ask. And in many cases, we'll, we'll fly in, meet with the, the city themselves and see what opportunities exist. One of the things I love about doing this uh, show is a lot of the conversations go pretty similarly. It's we're here at AWG to help member retailers do things that they don't have the the time or knowledge base to pull off, whether that's, you know, installing new software, helping with uh, store remodels or working with the government to to find money for for the stores. Like everyone that, that works in a support center here at AWG is kind of doing the same thing uh, just in their own area. So, Joel, why don't you start out by by telling us I'm a retailer. I want a new store. What are, what are some of the public incentives available to me? Yeah, the, the, the goal for us is really to be an extension of the retailer staff, you know, an advocate for what they're looking to do. And, and on ground up construction or new store construction, most often it starts with market research, which is also a service that AWG has internal headed up by Terry Moore and his group. But the, the market research really looks at what type of sales volume is available in a given market. And that's what the cities are looking for. They're looking for a sales tax base or a property tax base increase that's going to aid their residents of their community. So normally what we look for on a major remodel or ground up construction is to start with market research and see how we can better serve that market. What type of sales volume is available in that market? Then we start looking at what the costs are to build. So we will help put together cost estimates with the member retailer and figure out exactly what the project is going to cost total. 
Then we start looking at what types of incentives might be available to offset some of those costs. And those can be as high as 25, 30, even 40% in some markets, or as low as five to 10% given you know, some of the, the scopes of the project itself. But really, more than anything, it's knowing what questions to ask to see if you can maximize the opportunities for those incentives. Usually you're looking at two different sources. One is either sales tax rebate or a property tax rebate. Both of those mechanisms allow an offset of cost for that retailer. So if a project is gener- or is estimate to say maybe $10 million, if you can get a five or 10% decrease of that project, you can see how significant the numbers will be. Now, almost every one of these incentives that you go after and will work with with the city are paid back over time. This is not a cash check that you're getting. This is a usually a rebate over a period of 10, 15, and, and upwards of 20 years. But it is a rebate that is through the city. So it's something that if you're generating an X number of sales tax dollars, portions of that can come back to you. For example, in Oklahoma, they have an opportunity for up to a 3% sales tax rebate to the retailers if they are investing in the right types of, of programs for their store. And that 3% can be a percentage of it, maybe one, one and a half percent. It just depends. Other communities do it differently, but overall, the overriding theme is decrease the project cost, stabilize the, the market so you have a viable grocery store in that market for a long period of time and benefiting the residents and ultimately benefiting the retailer. I think one thing that I w- want to touch on is the fact that, like you said, it's not it's not a check that they're be- being given up front. So what does that do to the to the project you know, overall? Uh, does that change any sort of planning on like what it takes to get started or you know, what, what does that actually mean for the retailer? That's a great question. And, and it absolutely does change the way that things are started. As with, as with any banking relationship, you know, any project that's financed through uh, private means, there's going to be a down payment, right? Mm-hmm. You, you have to come up with a percentage of money to satisfy any lender that's going to say yes to your project. And what this can do is decrease that out-of-pocket upfront cost by the retailer if it's 10, 15, 20% down payment. These incentives are looked at as almost like a cash flow opportunity for this bank. And you can monetize those cash flow opportunities in certain situations as well. So really what you're doing is trying to decrease that upfront investment from the retailer. So what they're doing is utilizing public funding to to equate to what they have to come up with out of pocket. And and that can be substantial. In some cases, we've seen three, four, five million dollar incentive packages on larger projects that can help decrease that overall scope and definitely allows for the retailer to look at a project that's a little bit more viable than writing a check day one. Yeah. So now talk to me about funds for remodeling. Like we we built our new store. Now we need to remodel it. What what's available to us? It, It gets a little trickier on the remodels because most of the time remodels are internal to the store. And really what the city is looking for is something that's going to generate either a property tax increase or a sales tax increase. It's not to say that remodels aren't eligible for, for public incentives. They can be. Usually what you're looking at is some type of an exterior remodel. So the public is, is it, it's visible to the public. Sometimes that involves a landlord, so it can get a little trickier. So obviously our real estate department can help work with us through you know what we're doing with the, the landlord and how they play a role in all of this. Landlords are just like any other investor. They don't want to spend any money they don't have to. And they don't. uh, As experience of doing this for over 12 years, landlords like to hold on to their money. But I often notice they they really do perk up when you talk about public incentives and and maybe matching dollar for dollar where a landlord might invest a half a million dollars. The city might match that, that funds. So really what you're doing is bringing a lot of people to the table to say, hey, how can we make sure this grocery store can be successful for the next 10, 15, 20 years? And a landlord that doesn't have to spend money, I've never met one that doesn't smile. One of the things that I think is is really good that you mentioned before is, you know, they're they're wanting to help their communities. The 
the city government. And one of the things that we talk about on Grocery Pod all the time is just like how AWG members are a part of the community and how everything that, you know, independent grocery does is benefiting the community. And so it seems like it would be a pretty easy sell uh, for you guys to come in and say, this is what a remodel w- will do to this to this store that, you know, maybe it, maybe people haven't been going to. Maybe the sales have dipped a little bit, but a remodel can bring bring the community together. Yeah. If you look at our retailers as a whole, they, they are the, the retailers that are sponsoring the Boys and Girls Club. They are the retailers that are sponsoring the football team, the Girl Scout team. You know, the major big box retailers that we compete with on a daily basis you may see them outside selling hot dogs at one of those places every now and again, but very seldom are they the ones donating the hot dogs to that group so they can try to make money. The independent retailers are the fiber of that, that community usually. And, and we look at a lot of communities that may be two, three, four thousand people that the local grocery store is more than just a grocery store. So the investment that we're making with them on either a remodel or something to improve sales or, or improve most often improve services because quite frankly, it may be the only place to get dinner or a hot grab and go place that you can buy ribs or a rotisserie chicken or, or whatever program that you're, you're focused on. It's bigger than that. And the local governments recognize that they really do. And if you can find an advocate in your community, that's on either a city council or a planning commission to say, Hey, how can we partner together? to do another thing for our community, which is growing business, which there isn't a city administrator in the world that doesn't want to grow business in his community, whether it's a thousand person community or a hundred thousand person community. And the grocery stores are that type of uh, impact on the local economy. Uh, What types of projects qualify for these incentives? Most often it's, it's a major remodel. So you're looking at inside the store and outside the store. So you're replacing equipment usually. Almost always equipment replacements have something to do with energy savings and trying to do get an ROI on, an, on equipment that is going to be upgraded over what was there. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of retailers that don't have newer equipment, uh, so the, the energy consumption is large. Then it's also looking at the decor and, and how the store looks. When you walk into the store, is there fresh paint on the walls or are, are there brand new displays that help focal, uh, focus somebody's attention to either a deli or um, meat uh, or any type of things that we can do that are going to add sales to the, to the bottom line? And there are a lot of things that we can do in a store. Simply cleaning the store and painting the store sounds like just a small approach, but it makes a huge difference on how people view it. When they walk through the store, if, if something feels clean and new, p- people want to be there. If it feels old and tired, they really don't. And that, that's where they may be losing customers is when things start to feel old and tired. I would imagine that uh, retailers listening to this uh, are going to jump to the conclusion that, oh, I need a, a massive project to, to qualify. Are there small projects that qualify as well? Yeah, you really you really don't need a massive project. The, the bigger the project, the harder it is, right? The com- more complexity. Now, we've done them, uh, and we've been involved in you know $25 million projects, and, but we've also been involved in $2,500 projects. So it, it scans the whole gamut. The incentives component of it, the smaller the project, usually the easier it is to get people on board but you're still trying to do something that's going to be uh, successful. So there is a balance. And what we need to do on our side with AWG's team is look at that balance and say, okay, is this maybe a grant project that we want to look at versus an incentives project? And there are, there is a difference, you know, grant projects require grant writers and, and, and usually there's a cost to go after those. The incentive side does have cost. There there's usually a, a real estate lawyer that has to be involved to get things finalized, but it can be managed and it it can be uh, expected in terms of what the costs will be out of pocket up front. And we can usually give pretty good estimates to the retailers as to what they'd be looking at in terms of out of pocket costs. More than anything, again, I keep going back to the market research and, and what we're trying to do here is add sales. So the most investment that, or the best investment that any retailer can do when they're looking at a remodel 
is looking at that market research and having our real estate team let them know what type of sales lift is possible based on what they're doing. Whether it's, like I said, 2,500 or 25 million, there, there's always going to be a lift when you're improving. It's just a function of what that lift will be. You've mentioned a couple of times that most of the the incentives are either a property tax rebate or a sales tax rebate. Is there a, an advantage of one over the other for the retailer? There, there's definitely advantage if you can do sales tax. That That is kind of what I'll say is the holy grail of, of in the incentive side, because you can control your own destiny, right? If, if you're if you're getting that lift on the sales side, sales tax increase comes with that. Property tax can be a little bit trickier because it's it's an appraisal, you know, and it's it's somebody looking at your property and saying, yes, it's now worth X thousands of dollars more because you made that improvement. And the sales tax is a pass through. The property tax is also a pass through, but you're paying your property tax and getting rebated back. So if you can focus and obtain the sales tax side of it, if it's available, it is a better approach than property tax, but both of them can be used. And there are multiple, I, I'd say we kind of look at it of different buckets of money and, and what different buckets are available and try to maximizing what's best for the retailer is kind of the trick of the trade of, of how we've been doing this. Uh, honestly, we've been doing it since I've been here and I've been here almost 13 years. So this is something that AWG has been doing successfully for, for the better part of a couple of decades. So given your 13 years of experience here at AWG, what's the, the one thing that we haven't talked about yet that retailers need to know about this process? Investment in your store will pay dividends, whether that's with you as a retailer and a business owner, whether it's with your community. And, and store engineering, DSG, real estate are all here to help you as an extension of your staff knowing that this isn't what you do on a daily basis. It is what we do on a daily basis. And what we want to do more than anything is help you grow sales. And if we can do that through a remodel, through a decor project, through an identification of, of lost sales, through the, the market research side, or how we can grow, help grow your business, that's all we want to do. Well, Joel, uh, I appreciate you stopping by. And if any member retailers out there are planning any sort of project or think that something's coming up uh, down the line, they should definitely contact you and your team to see if there's any uh, public incentives out there for them. Um, thank you all for listening. Please remember to like and subscribe to Grocer Pod. That way you can stay up to date on all the latest things going on around AWG. And until next week, this has been Shankar Sednar with Grocer Pod. Thank you.